Okay, Ron. I'm sorry I left you for dinner. No, well, she's not. <laughs> I know. I know. Actually, I'm not. gives itself a little leeway. The Senate can limit, can introduce eight after the pre-filing deadline. The deadline for pre-file for requesting drafts of pre-filing is December 3rd. Now, you all's meeting with the legislative delegations on the 29th, and the deadline for submitting drafting requests is the third. So we're gonna, if we can nail this down sooner, we're gonna go ahead and start meeting with the delegation, to get bills drafted sooner. We as may have shared with you we're getting pushed we've gotten pushback last year from general assembly members about carrying bills with that they thought had little chance of um, passage so keep that in mind this is an election year for the house all the house members are up for election in, in 2013. in addition it's a gubernatorial election and we've got a lot of jockeying there and, for, and also the, the entire session is going to be colored by economic uncertainty. As you all know, you've got sequestration, sequestration is sitting out there. And while all the focus and all the media attention has been on the Department of Defense reductions, those reductions are actually across all federal programs. DOD has just gotten the ink. So it'll affect federal programs for K-12, federal programs that go to directly to cities and counties and towns. So that's, that's hanging out there. And if there's no action by the Congress, or just as bad, a continuing resolution that puts it off for another six months to a year, um, it'll be problematic for the state. There'll be impact on state and local budgets because the uncertainty created by that, I can guarantee you that the legislators on the money committees are going to look at that and say, we need to put more money aside. Mr. George, I, I've never really focused on how much money comes from the federal government in terms of like schools. I mean, you know, we receive a fair portion, but how much is that really just a pass through and how much is the state money? Most of what the state gets is passed through to local governments. If I were the Richmond School Board, all of it's Carl Perkins money, which is vocational training money. Um, Title I money, which is for at-risk kids, all of that is directly to the, comes through to the local school divisions and could have a significant impact. And that's not factored into the school board's um, budget scenarios at this point at all. And that, if I may follow up, I mean, I realize some of the monies come from sales tax. Which I'm just, yeah, 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 K-12 money does. Yeah, okay, but for the most it's, part. It's general funds. Is, is yeah, but, but for the most part, what you're telling me is the majority of money that comes from the state really is flowing from the federal government. No, no, no. Okay. The majority, no, just the opposite. The majority, majority of money coming from the state for K-12 is, is state money. Yeah. It's just the opposite. Right. Okay. 
So in, in, react, in anticipation of this last year, the state set aside in the current budget, remember in the uh, annual budget, we're going into this, we'll be going into the, uh, in the first year of a two-year budget, with the next year beginning next July 1st. The General Assembly set aside beginning next July 1st, I believe it's $35 million in a, in a reserve in, in the event that revenue started to head south and made it clear that if the revenues don't, uh, if the Fed, federal government's picture is still uncertain, they intend to increase that reserve fund. This is above and beyond the state's rainy day fund. Uh, in the event that that money is not needed, then the money is earmarked for um, employee salary increases next July. Now, there are a number of issues which I expect will be emphasized by the governor this year. The governor's already signaled that he's going to come back on a lot of his K-12 initiatives that he wasn't successful with last year and pursue those again this year. And he's got some more in the, in the pipeline, some of which have the potential to cost uh, local government's money simply because they make the student more poor, they allow the student to be more poor. For example, one of them is, deals with virtual schools, and I'm not going to get into the details, but essentially it allows a child who wants to enroll in a full-time virtual school, say it's in another jurisdiction, for the state and local money to follow that kid out of the jurisdiction. Uh, in addition, the governor's going to put more continuous emphasis on job creation and initiatives, and the last one uh, that I expect him to put a lot of emphasis on is health care and Medicaid. Um, there's, there's a lot of pressure on Medicaid, not so much because of the number of participants growing, it's because the state over the last few years has slashed the reimbursements to providers. That's where the real pressure in Medicaid in Virginia is coming from, is the providers. We have some of the lowest reimbursement rates Forever. And, and a lot of the providers are actually losing money and pulling out of the Medicaid program. There are parts of the state you cannot find a Medicaid provider. Uh, in addition, so there's going to be emphasis on Medicaid to, you know, if there's more money to improve the provider reimbursement rates. On health care, it's dealing with the effects of the Affordable Care Act. The governor has declined to pursue creating a uh, health exchange. Whether or not, and there's a split segment in the General Assembly on whether the state should default to a federal exchange or whether it should create its own exchange. And then whether or not an exchange is even desirable. So, um, Thank you. Did we, uh, isn't there a deadline whereby the federal government creates one of those for you if you refuse to do that? There's every, ex there is, it's the end of the year, there's every expectation that, 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 that the Congress and can, some type of resolution will simply uh, extend that deadline. And do you think that will be part of an overall budget plan? I guess just to put it all together, or is that kind of a who knows? Who knows? That's, a who, that's the, definitely the who knows category at this point. Cool. And just briefly here, given that I think it could be argued that the most productive error of the, the first. Obama administration, or let's say within a condensed time period, was between the 2010 congressional elections and uh, when that next Congress was was sworn in. I mean, don't you see that as an opportunity to, to make some headway on this secret story? Yes. There's, there's, it depends on which way the coin falls. The, I mean, depending on the outcome of the election, and I'm talk, not talking about the presidential election, it's the Congress. Um, you could wind up with a major rollback of the Affordable Care Act, or you could um, wind up with just uh, some minor tweaking of it. I think there's going to be tweaked in, in any event. Uh, it's got some issues that need to be fixed, and both, both sides agree. But the question in terms of whether or not there's a real rollback of it depends on the congressional election, particularly control of the Senate. There's no doubt there's the votes in the House, House, of, uh, House of Representatives to do it. The question is whether or not there will be in the United States Senate, and that depends on the election. But this rollback will be huge, though. I mean, this. <clears throat> First thing, I think it will be real difficult. The most recent clear. polling I've seen for, for Affordable Care Act is, is if parts of it get implemented, people are starting to support it more and more. Um, the fiscal cliff is not directly connected to the Affordable Care Act. That's related to uh, the debt seat, the, the debt reduction, 
it's the expiration of the Bush tax cuts, uh, which are scheduled to happen absent congressional action on December 31st, and cuts, draconian cuts in federal agencies, which also are here just scheduled to start at that time. Thanks. Do you have any sense in terms of Medicaid expansion if that looks like it's going to go? The only expansion, which is, I, I can tell you, the, the, the expansion will be tied only to that required by the Affordable Care Act and, right. that, the feds, up, and that the feds are willing to pay for it. Now, implicit in the ACA is that the feds will pay for the first several right. years of exactly. expansion. If they uphold that, the state will probably go ahead and embrace the expansion, but there's some, if I remember correctly, one of the elements of the Supreme Court ruling was that states are not required to undertake that expansion. That's correct. Yeah, and if that happens, and and I, and frankly, I think as long as the feds pony up the money, the state will do it. But the first time, first time the state is shorted a dollar by the cost of one hundred percent of the cost by the feds, they'll start. They'll pull the plug on it. Yeah, that's some number of years out. Yeah. Okay. So the percentage eligibility <coughs> um, for the state, you said, has been decreasing. As it relates to reimbursement? The reimbursements, the, what the state pays the providers has been cut because of the recession. And um, and in addition, it's either cut and in a lot of more cases it's been frozen. This just hasn't grown. But the cost of the health care has been going here, but the reimbursement's been staying here, so the providers are losing money. And you don't think there's any political will to change that? I think that that will be where the first dollar from Medicaid goes. It will be spent on increasing provider reimbursements. The other, the other expect, the unexpected emphasis by the General Assembly, I expect them to continue their effort at what they call structural budget corrections, is two, which is essentially means two things: that ongoing operating money is the, the general fund revenues are, and are dedicated only to ongoing operations; that they steer away from one-time cost unless they can definitely tie one-time money to it, and secondly, um, they will continue to pull funding from programs that are outside what they call core state services. The, uh, they're going to focus on debt management. There's a real concern that they've hit the top of the credit card. Um, now the state constitutional debt limit is 5%, uh, but the state has a self-imposed debt limit that's considerably less. It's about 3% and it's regulated by something called the debt advisory committee, the DSAC, the Debt Capacity Advisory Committee over at the Treasury Department. And uh, if you look at all the debt that's been issued by the authorized by the state over the last several years, we're really near that cap. And I'll tell you how that's going to affect the city here in a minute. What's the name of that committee again? The Debt Capacity Advisory Committee. It has the state treasurer and several of the director of jail and some others, and they actually monitor the state's debt. <coughs> I do expect there to be a major initiative, at least out of the Senate, again this year in transportation funding. Um, whether or not it goes anywhere in the House remains to be seen. The House has, uh, remains. Strongly opposed to any tax increase of any of any type, but that's but, I, but the Senate is going to make the case very strongly that Virginia is losing its competitive position in the economic marketplace because of its lack of investment in infrastructure. Two other items, that, one other item that will also be uh, in addition to the others I've mentioned is it's going to dominate the headlines with the General Assembly this year is uranium mining. It is a very hot button issue. I think it has a high probability of passing. Uh, there's been a moratorium on uranium mining in the state since the early 70s. And uh, there are significant uranium deposits in Virginia all along the Piedmont, essentially running Fairfax south to Pennsylvania County, just above Danville. <coughs> 
there's been a proposal, there's a group, Virginia Uranium Incorporated, which plans to mine significant deposits in Pennsylvania, uh, and they need that moratorium lifted. And it's, on, it's in the watershed for the uh, Lake Gaston watershed, which most of Hampton Roads draws its water from. So there are a lot of issues there. All right. With that as a backdrop, let's talk about uh, how we go about taking our list. And as you know, from some of you, this is probably the first time you've seen this list. But I must admit, it's probably, it's, it's not probably, it's longer than it's ever been. It's eight pages, and it's, and it's got quite a bit of stuff on it. And remember, we haven't seen the stuff from the administration yet, so we might have, have to add that to it. Uh, so in years past, if you pull out your blue sheet, those of you who are here but then, We'll remember it at one of these retreats over at, uh, I think it was Bird Park. It was in one of the houses in the park. We, uh, we went through this, it was in the summer. And you all essentially adopted these criteria for guiding what goes in your legislative package. So I pull them out again to help us as we go through this process. I keep notes, I keep stuff going back forever like a pack rat. So these are the suggested criteria. And if you'll notice, priority one is Richmond specific issues. Issues affect, affecting only the city of Richmond or primarily only the city, such as, and here's some examples you've dealt with over the years, charter changes, CSO funding, jail construction funding, payment lieu of taxes. Priority two would be statewide issues that, substantial, that also substantially affect the city. Uh, it also would include financial funding, funding issues such as affordable housing, expansion of art districts, red light cameras, 599 funding, K-12 funding, machinery and tools tax. Priority three would be constituent requested issues brought to council members that affect a neighborhood or group of people. Uh, Mr. Jewelry, you'll remember the motorized skateboards popularly known as pocket rockets from a few years ago that constituents came to you about and we got that <coughs> care with the General Assembly. It took an act of the General Assembly to allow us to regulate it. Uh, and we'd lump everything else into priority four, all other. What did you do that with for Mr. Jewell on the side? Yeah. <laughs> nobody else We're sitting down here. What do we, you know, we got to go Well, yeah, high friends are a little places. Right. I don't, I think that was Miss Trammell. Too. Who was complaining about those noisy students? Those noisy students, remember? I will just say this: that it was the in all the years that I've been working with, with you all, it was the first time we've actually had a group of citizens come over from the neighborhood and testify in support of the bill. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. They came in support of the bill. Oh yeah, the motorized skateboards were driving them crazy. The kids were running them everywhere. And they have this whiny little motor. Real noise, real noise. Okay, once we've gone through and, and, and ranked everything and, and sorted and, and ranked this list, there are some other things we need to consider as we go through, and that's the complexity of the issue. Remember, it's a short session, it's up to 45 <coughs> calendar days, there's going to be a little time. Or, and little appetite for getting into anything complex. You're just not going to give it the, the attention it deserves. Second is, is it lo local versus statewide? Do we have a coalition? Or is this Richmond doing it on its own? And more and more coalitions have become very, very important in everything we do. Um, and as we, go, as we go forward, we need to partner more with other localities through VML in, in some of the things that we want to do. Um, who are, who are the allies and opponents, business groups, other localities, others? The fiscal impact. If it costs money, we're going to be asked, where do you expect the money to come from? Cuts in other programs, tax or fee in, taxes or fee increases, because the state's not looking at a whole lot more money. Uh, and then, as I will close, in, in this part of it, implicit mollus is a reality check. Um, does it issue justify the effort that we have to put into it? It's very, very difficult to get a bill passed to the General Assembly today. 
In other words, is the juice is the juice worth the squeeze, as they say in the in the another football world. Second thing to ask is it a long term or short term okay. strategy? And sometimes we need to think about things that we know we need to work on it. We're not going to fix it in a year, so let's bite it off in small steps. The third thing is need to recognize that everything cannot get the same level of effort. Ms. Wicker and I spend a lot of hours over there, and in the pecking order, some things are more important than others, and they, and they take a lot of time. And try to work on that on the ones that are the most important and finally I'd ask you to recognize that less is sometimes more <laughs> if we can have something small the delegation can embrace and really run with it and work hard on it, it makes it a lot easier <laughs> with that I propose that I propose in the interest of getting out of here on time that we do this that we take this approach that you all take this list and just score the items on it just in pencil, pen, whatever. Get them back to Lou's office by the end of the week. Give it a one, two, three, or four. Yes, ma'am. May I ask if you would take that list and strike the things that you think that has little potential? I, I understand we will make our determination, but I think that would be helpful as well. We'll do that concurrently if it's okay with you. And, um, you don't want to do it right now? Let's go through it. No questions. Um, no. No. Yeah, it's it's all the arguments. So. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't you give me the last time anymore. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, did I miss something on here about uh, the composition of the of the board of the Richmond Metropolitan Authority? It's on there. It's in there somewhere. Uh, so, it's very brief. It says R R something about R M A. And believe me, if it wasn't on there, I'd add it. Oh, there we are. 37 uh, F. This will be the fifth year of double RMA. It put it on there, but not going away. Okay. Uh, Extremely important. So that, with that, if you'll get Ms. Ali's your list by the end of the week, then I'll, I'll also do the same. And then... Cool. Well, Ms. Newville's got questions. Go ahead. Uh, it would be helpful uh, for some of us if some of these things are allowable by the locality. For example, I don't know if it's if we as a locality can require chain restaurants and food sold from vending machines to disclose material content. Well, if we can, we we discussed that with Haskell at Government Ops last week, and they're going to look into the ones that identify ones that the city has its own authority. It would be helpful to know, and that we know mm -hmm. those don't need to go across. Right. I mean, and there are probably more of them. Um, yeah, and I guess then the opportunity to make a case for some that would go across the street, but... Well, what we would do, what I'd suggest is when we bring the list back to you with the consolidated rankings, um, then if there's, if you, that's the time to go through if there's something that's not where you want it to be to get a discussion. It's probably more efficient use of your time than us trying to stand here and, and go through them all. Okay. So what I'd just like to add is that if, if, if you agree to that Friday deadline, please do your ranking because um, Mr. Jordan one has already shared about the tight time <coughs> and how there is a need to address this. So if you're agreeing that you're going to do your rankings, please get them in by Friday so you can start this process because we had about three deadlines to get the legislative agenda together. And I know everybody's busy, but um, you could just get that thing. That one and with the ranking being one to five, is one being one just just like this. This is really yes. One to four. One to four. Okay. Using the criteria there for each. I think somebody over there, and then Mr. Robertson, Mr. Gilbert, did you begin up? 
Well, I'm just going to ask methodology, so okay. my question is answered. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Harrison. Um, Mr. Jordan, is it possible that you could do yours prior to Friday and we can sure. get yours by so that we would have yours electronically at least by Friday morning? Good. As long as you're willing to just, uh, without an explanation, just, right. all right. Okay, sure. Yeah. So then are you going to wait and wait for lunch, right? That's so right. That is Friday. I'll give this, no, I'll get you the list of ones I don't think oh, have okay. a, are, are have least likely to succeed uh, okay. tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so I'll get that out to you as I would say. Okay, so Friday, please send these in. Otherwise, you will not get the opportunity to cast your ballot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one quick question. Uh, the voter ID laws, is, did the General Assembly do what they, they thought they could get through the last time? Are we going to revisit those? Or? I don't think they're going to revisit them. They've, been, they've passed. They went to the Justice Department, which signed off on them. Um, I don't look for them to revisit them. Thank you. Now, I mentioned one thing about the uh, the state's debt affecting the, the city, that's debt capacity. Been working with um, utilities for the last couple of months on combined sewer overflow issues, and the utilities can explain to you at, at, at appropriate time the new strategy that they're they've work, been working on to kind of put a bow, tie bow around the CSO issue, but it takes a one-time chunk of big money, and we have been working with Lynchburg to approach the state to include it in a debt, in a bond issue, um, but we've gotten word back that the state views its credit card as fairly well maxed out at this point in time, this, and this may not be the year for that approach. <clears throat> So if, if you get this in on Friday, then will you be ready to discuss this on Monday? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what time Monday? Because I got another one on 17. What? Your three starts at three. Okay, that'll work. Three works, you can go first. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, we're trying to move the school board in the, in the same timeline as you are. So, so where is this? Everybody knows if you want to have it, put it in your we're going to that, put in your schedule to that first undock it on Monday, so that'll be the first item. Now that goes really far along. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and yeah, unless uh, it's too late to go with your door. <laughs> So we go home. But I think, uh, yeah, that, uh, thank you everybody for coming to this meeting. Thank you, Dr. And uh, have a good week. Thanks. And thank you to all the staff who put this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.